Now coming to the revenue regulation. As far as the ship uh, cost is concerned, let us say a 5,000 crore project. As you rightly said, uh, some of the naval projects, if it's a small ship, it is two to three years. If it's a big ship, it could be four to six years and so on. Let us take a 5,000 crore project. Now in a 5,000 crore project, the cost is divided into equipment, yard material and labor. That is the yard effort. Now, equipment cost is a maximum that comes to around 65% uh, and in some cases a weapon intensive platform, it, it could even touch 70%. The yard material, uh, when I say yard material, that is steel, then the fasteners, the insulation and so on, which regularly are used for shipbuilding, comes to around 10 to 15 percent. The balance is a yard effort, that is the labor, the subcontract costs and so on. Now, the initial phase, now coming back to the revenue recognition, your specific question on revenue recognition. The initial preparatory phase where the, the design activities are progressed, the equipment ordering is a progress. That time, the revenue recognition is very, very minimal. It is only the manpower booking happens and, mm -hmm. and so on, and the design mm -hmm. cost and so on. So we follow a typical S-curve for shipbuilding with respect to revenue recognition. So the first phase, when the preparatory phase, there is hardly any revenue recognition. Then the next phase is where the uh, plate cutting, the block fabrication right. and so on. Here, effectively, only the steel goes in. Here again, the revenue recognition, it forms the next step of the S. Then comes the phase where the maximum revenue recognition happens. That is between 40 to 65 percent of physical progress of a ship, where the equipment get pumped onto the ship. And that is where the revenue recognition is maximum. Then goes to the when the S peters out, the last phase of the project, where the acceptance and trials go on. Fantastic. So this in a nutshell uh, gives a shipbuilding cycle.